Welcome back. Do you dare to call him friend and hold tight. We're in for a ride. As a child, I spent many hours at the local play park that was only a few houses away from my home. On a hot summer's day, I'd make my way to the wooden merry-go-round to play a favorite neighborhood game that was called Got It, Dropped It. I don't know who made up the game, but we sure had fun playing it. It was a simple enough game, but to me, it was high adventure. Full of risks and rewards, the game kept us occupied for hours. A popsicle stick, a merry-go-round, three or more players, and a designated merry-go-round pusher were the only items needed for the game. The players would lie on their tummies, making sure that they were equally spaced on the merry-go-round. Their feet faced the center of the apparatus and players would scoot up as close to the edge so they could see the ground, but not too far so they didn't fall off. The designated pusher started the merry-go-round at a crawl. One person would drop the stick, announcing, dropped it. The next person grabbed the stick, shouting, you got it, and then they would let go and shout again, it dropped it. The unofficial playground rule stated that each player must drop the stick within the reach of the next person. After three successful catches, pick the pusher of the merry-go-round would pick up the pace. Those who failed to grab the stick as they passed over it were called out of the game. The early dropouts would sit cross-legged as close to the edge as possible and act as unofficial referees. Hey, he cheated. He pushed the stick too far. Hey, she didn't really pick it up. It fell out of her fingers. Those who dropped the stick too far off the path were chastised and were told to do it over. Repeat offenders were made to join those who failed the last round. As the game proceeded, the faster the merry-go-round went and players wrapped their feet around the bars that separated each section. As a designated pusher amped up the speed, players grabbed onto the merry-go-round with their free hand. There was a potential danger that an inattentive player could fly right off the merry-go-round due to its increasing speed. It was an unwritten rule that when older kids played, the younger and weaker children watched from the safety of the center pole of the apparatus, pressing their bodies against it and holding on with all their strength. Teenage players often chose not to anchor themselves to the center post and many flew off the merry-go-round. On occasion, their bravado led to broken collarbones. Sometimes it appears that our world around us is spinning out of control as the vortex of worries and responsibilities threaten to pull us into chaos. The foolish Christian believes he or she can live their lives on the edge. Unfortunately, these Christians fail to recognize the true source of their strength and that it lies in remaining as close to the source, as close to the center of God's heart as possible. Psalm 30, verse 6 and 7. As for me, I said in my prosperity, I shall not be moved. By your favor, O Lord, you have made my mountain stand strong. Corey Ten Boom said it this way, There is no safer place to be than in the center of God's will. Let us pray that we may always know it. Even if we're too weak to hold on to him, and maybe you're feeling that way right now, don't worry, his strong arms will wrap around us and he will hold us close if we just admit that we no longer can afford to stay on the very edge of the vortex that threatens to pull us off center.